they're at it again, an all-white town in South Africa. The headline reads, White Residents Only Town Booms in Rainbow Nation, South Africa. August 11, 2022. I'm Maddie Banks, and this is my report. From a distance, Arania looks like any other small town in rural South Africa. But once inside, the visitor is struck by an obvious difference. Everyone here is white. And in a country where menial work in wealthy areas is typically done by black employees, white people here mop supermarket floors, use leaf blowers, and harvest the nuts on pecan farms. Arania residents are 100% white in a country that has declared an end to racial segregation. The history of this incongruity dates back to 1991 when apartheid was in its death throes. Then white Africanas, descendants of 17th century Dutch colonizers, bought up 1,900 acres of land on the banks of the Orange River in the sparsely populated Karoo region. Using an autonomous status under the post-apartheid constitution, they created a privately owned town which has so far admitted only white inhabitants. Today, Arrhenius' population has surged almost tenfold, reaching around 2,500, and the economy is booming. Old Cape Dutch style houses hobnob with modern townhouses separated by low or no walls, but well-kept gardens. Children ride bicycles and adults jog freely on the clean streets. Small orange, white, and blue flags, the South African colors under apartheid, flutter in the afternoon wind as construction sites. Not Races. Sensitive to accusations of racism, residents insist they are not apartheid era nostalgics, but a community pursuing freedom with responsibility. This means, in their view, a community that manages its own affairs, away from the crime, power cuts, dysfunctional local governance and other problems plaguing South Africa today. Quote, people see Orania and maybe see there are no black workers. And their first idea is, wow, these guys must be racist. That's exactly not the case, says Wynan Boshoff, 52, a pioneer resident. In rich suburbs elsewhere in South Africa, manual jobs are done among almost exclusive black workers. But Arrhenius says it has broken with colonial and apartheid era labor practices. Quote, we do our own work from gardening to cleaning our houses our own toilets, to construction, everything. Arania is the only community that shuns the system of cheap black labor. Autonomy. Under South Africa's constitution, Arania has the right to self-determination and operates autonomously from central government. It has its own currency, the aura, pegged one-to-one -to, -one to the rand. 
The town is also seeking energy independence through solar. In a country largely powered by coal and deep into an energy crisis, prospective residents are vetted and must have no criminal record. It's like going into a marriage, said Stridham, a 28-year-old citizen. Would-be residents must share the values and subscribe to the town's goals, he said, insisting Arania was not racist or a desperate grass back to apartheid. Boschhoff said there was nothing stopping any non-white Africana from applying, only no one ever did. Quote, we haven't found anybody, end quote. A boom. Arrhenius' population has grown by up to 17% annually in recent years, and in 2021, new business creations were up by a quarter. Tourism is one of the main business activities, attracting an average of 10,000 visitors annually. In July 2022, two tribal leaders visited Arania on diplomatic missions. Representatives from the Kosa people and Tswana people met with Arania's leadership. The purpose of the visits were to, quote, learn more about self-determination. Suddenly, other communities are saying, how can we learn from you? Boshoff said, the diplomatic visits were captured by AFP journalists. Maraka, the 40-year-old chief of the Tswana ethnic group, said, quote, it was important for me to go, whether right or wrong. There is a success story in there somewhere. Vashoff is the grandson of an architect of apartheid. He argues that Africanas created Orania because they needed a place to call home. Quote, every African tribe or clan has a place of its own which they use as a reference point. Arania has become part of South Africa's landscape. Renzi Paisa, a 58-year-old former government worker, relocated to Arania from Pretoria in December. She said that she enjoyed having more social interaction with neighbors on the streets. Quote, it's a community where I can express myself in my own culture, end quote. South Africa's first black president, Nelson Mandela, strove relentlessly to reconcile the deeply divided country. He visited Orania in 1995 and had tea with Hendrik Vervoit's widow, who was prime minister under apartheid. a people who were not a people. I often say this about Adolf's American descendants of slavery. Wanting a homeland that embraces them where they are left alone. Is this different from the hundreds of ethnic enclaves in America who want to live in a safe place but maintain homeland dress, language, and values of back home. In this article, Boschkov notes that one African tribe does not seek to reside outside of their tribe jurisdiction. 
what do we learn from this? That in reality, humans, human ethnic groups embrace their shared roots. This is natural to survival doctrines. So, who is your tribe? By creating a haven where you can feel safe, practice the values and lifestyles residents embrace, where respect and love can grow through positive relationships, then what is the problem? Love, respect. Do no harm to others.